Coming up next, I interview Leah Moss from the Duke Spirit. Here she is with a bucket list exclusive, an interview from a van. Leela Moss from the Duke Spirit, and we're in the tour van. I've never been in a tour van before. What's it like to live in a van? I mean, I know you don't live in a van, but to travel a lot in a van. <laughs> I might have had to live in a van at some point. Um, well, this so this is different to a tour bus. This is something you might take on a, maybe a short run. Like right. we're playing three shows this weekend, so we're uh, yeah, we're comfortable places to put a small luggage, travel light. Um, I find it quite comfortable, actually. Yeah, it's, sort of, it's quite neat. We are actually in the process of you waiting to start your gig. What is that like? Are you starting to get nervous? Do you get nervous anymore? Like yeah, I do, actually. I was just saying, yeah, I, I get nervous all the time. And it's usually the same, sort of nervous. Then you walk on, that goes, and you're just really happy to be there. Um, and it's kind of a no I just I wish I didn't get nervous. I wish I didn't get nervous, but I suppose there's an element of that is why performance is kind of dangerous and interesting is because you you know it's not the same every night it's uh, exhilarating and a bit knackering You're back. What's it like to come back? Is this your? Is this the whole Rocky thing? You know, you come back and you win. Like, what's it like? Um, feels pretty. Feels pretty good so far, I suppose. If you if you take a break and you sort of do more real life stuff, like you spend time with your family and you spend time trying to work and things like that, then there is a sensation at some point where you think, oh, maybe maybe I won't ever play. You know, might not play again. Might not do anything again. And that's feels very sad. But when you return to something you feel really appreciative. So, you know, coming up here today, you're like, wow. Might, a couple of years ago, might have just, that might have all faded away, but you actually get back, you start playing, and, um, oh, yeah, you feel kind of like warm, warm and full of, uh, full of fuzzy good vibes. think about the future? Do you know where you're going? Do you know if you're going to release another album? Do you know if you're going to do another this, another that? Do you ever think about that kind of stuff? I mean, yeah, we uh, definitely think about the future, but not in a way you do perhaps when you're really gripping and holding on to something in a kind of tense, anxious way. I think you do that maybe when, when you are younger and you don't know how things will unfold. I honestly would say that we just, uh, yeah, we already have a kind of vision of the next set of songs and have written some stuff. Um, and in honesty, you feel quite a sort of genuine, whatever will happen will happen, you know? And that's sort of, maybe that sounds a bit smarmy, but you know, there is a point where we've sort of traveled through a really strange music industry era. And so you can have a confidence about your own work and that definitely maintains. And I definitely want, you know, I feel like the work I'm doing now is so much better than things I've done in the past. So that makes me happy. And regards to anything else in terms of actual, you know, trage trajectories about this or that, you just don't know. As long as the work is good and there's some movement and progression and a few ideas, then it's all good.
Friday, May the 6th, uh, we have a new album out. It's called Kin, K-I-N. Um, and we have a beautiful 12-inch version with emerald green vinyl and a really kind of interesting, beautiful bit of cover art that's designed by a great friend of mine of kind of interconnecting neon faces. And um, it's a beautiful moment where the sort of the title, the sentiment of the songs and the artworks converge to make something that I think's pure classic.